Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be showing you how to make the micro smallmouth bass jig that I fished with this fall, catching some big smallmouth bass. Uh, that's a technique I learned up on the St. Lawrence River fishing a Toyota series this year. Um, and I got the stuff to make my own jigs. That's how I did it the first time. And you guys all commented you'd love to see a video on how to actually make the jig. So winter time up here in Pennsylvania, we got the lead pot heating up. We're going to make some jigs. So we're going to take you through the entire process on how I make this jig. Um, this is the weedless football head jig mold. I buy everything from Barlow's Tackle for my tackle making. I'll link all the products in the bottom of the video here if you want to check out any of them to get for yourself. Um, but this is the one that I use. It's just a weedless football jig mold with a 90 degree line tie. And this is actually meant for like four and five odd hooks dragging big football jigs offshore, uh, which you can use that mold for this as well, which is awesome. This goes from a quarter to three quarters of an ounce. So you can make a three quarter with a five odd hook and go drag it for some big fish offshore, large mouth. Or what we're gonna be doing today is pouring the one quarter ounce to make uh, the jig that we're gonna be talking about. So you can modify your own tackle a little bit by doing this, and that's why I love making my own tackle so much. Uh, we're gonna take you through everything today, all the different components. Uh, same kind of thing we did with the spinner bait. I'm actually filming this the same day before I leave for my Asia trip. Uh, but basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna talk about the materials. So the materials for this is gonna be much more simple than the spinner bait video. If you haven't seen that, it'll be linked at the end of today's. Uh, but you need the mold, so that's what the mold we'll be using. Um, I use these owner hooks. They're the 5313s, and I buy them in a one-aught size. I use them for my ball head jigs. I use them for my Ned rigs, and I use them for this technique here. So it's a very versatile hook. Uh, it's a little bit of a heavier wire, so it holds up to those big smallmouth, and then it has a little sickle hook on the end, uh, and you get a lot of good hookups with that. So that's the hook we're going to be using. You can use a weed guard with this if you want. I do not use a weed guard, uh, but if you want to use a weed guard, you can put the same weed guard in there. Um, you'd basically just put your base hole pin in when you pour, and then you would drill out that hole after you paint it and glue your weed guard in. Uh, we don't have any weed guards today. I like fishing mine open hook, um, mostly just because I get better hookups and I'm fishing it on a spinning rod usually, so I don't want the weed guard in the way. Um, and then powder paint, we'll be doing some painting out here before we take it back inside to show you how to tie one of these up and finish the jig off. Uh, but we'll be using the matte green pumpkin. This is the Protec powder paint. Uh, the matte green pumpkin was the one that I saw online and I really like that matte finish. So I got that powder paint there. I also have a gloss green pumpkin, so you can do that too. I have watermelon red, I have black. You can get creative with your colors. That's where once you get it poured into the jig head form, you can start getting creative there and really making your bait yours. So we're just gonna do a plain green pumpkin on green pumpkin today and show you the basics of how to do this. Uh, but if you wanna see more videos on like how to do different crawfish fish patterns like peanut butter and jellies or like a black and blue crawfish and different stuff like that comment down below if you want to see more bait making videos but um, that's the powder paint we're going to be using for today and then we'll go through skirt material I'm freezing. We're going to want to get these poured as quick as, can, as I can. Um, I talked about it in the spinnerbait video. Usually what I do is pour a bunch up a front and ahead of time when it's still fall or winter. Water to air temps might be like 40 or 50 degrees and I'm not going to freeze here while I'm pouring them. I'll pour a bunch of heads and then I tie them up inside. Um, so we're going to get, we'll go through that when we actually get these poured and back inside so that we can show you how to tie one of these up. So let's bring you in close and we'll show you how to pour one of these baits up. All right, so now that we got our lead pot heating up, the first thing that I like to do is kind of open up my mold and set it on top just like this. That heat's going to radiate up and start to heat up this mold. So on a cold day like this, that's going to keep that mold hot enough um, so that it'll accept the lead and you'll get a full pour and make sure your baits are coming out the way that they're supposed to. Um, so that's what we're doing right now is just waiting for that to heat up. I prep my stuff in the meantime. So I have three hooks here. We're just going to pour three one quarter ounce baits um, just so that we have a couple to show you how to do it. So um, I'm not gonna stand out here and pour a million of them today because I am freezing. So right now we're waiting for this to get ready. And once that's ready, we'll show you how to pour them and we'll show you how to paint them. Then we're going back inside where it's warm. All right, our lead should be hot enough now and our mold should be hot enough now. Um, basically what I'll do is I'll open my mold and get that ready to go with a hook. So I'll take this hook here and I'll lay it right in the cavity. Um, of the mold just like this it's hard with gloves on and also trying to show you at the same time but i'll lay it right in the cavity where it fits and i'll clamp that shut as tight as i can to make sure that it doesn't leak lead i'll scrape all my junk out of my pot here so that's not getting in my 
my baits. And then I'll make sure my nozzle is clean. There's no cold lead in the nozzle. And now we're ready to pour. So I'm gonna line it up. Pour my lead in there until I hit the top. And then once I hit the top, I'll let it cool for just a second. And then that one is good and ready to come out of the mold. We'll pour these two other ones here. And it's just that easy. Um, this is usually the pretty easy part. Once you get in a rhythm, you can just rapid fire through these and pour a million of them. The part that takes time is then painting them and putting a skirt on them. But now the mold is all ready to go. I can just rapid fire another right, right in there. Let that come all the way to the top. And that's it. And I could pour different sizes at the same time if I wanted to. Um, so if I wanted to have 3 eighths, half ounce, whatever, um, I could do that. If I wanted to pour these as a one quarter for smallmouth fishing and then wanted some uh, 3 eighths through half ounce for largemouth with a 4 aught hook, I'd just set up my table, um, making sure I have the correct hooks where I want and lay it out how I want to do it. And I'll just load the mold with hooks, keep this clear, and just rapid fire through a bunch of baits um, and save yourself a bunch of money pouring. So. I can see there's lead that actually got solidified in the, the tip here because it's so cold out. So I'll clear that out, pour me another one, let that solidify. And we got three smallmouth football jigs ready to go just like that. So the last thing that I do to make sure these are ready to go to painting, I'll take these sprues on the top, grab it with a pair of pliers, wiggle it back and forth, it'll break clean off. I drop it right back in the pot so it'll remelt and I can make more jigs, get the most out of my lead, twist the top off of that one, grab a pair of pliers, twist the top off of that one. Three jigs ready to go just like that. You can pour a million of them at one time. Um, that's why I never care if I snag them because a whole bag of hooks costs like 20 bucks and the lead is like $3 a pound. You get a bunch of them for a pound. I just rapid fire through them. The only thing that takes is some time, but I got plenty of it in the winter when it's snowing outside. So we're gonna shut the pot off here. We're gonna get our extension cord ready to go, set up our paint booth and show you how to uh, paint these guys up. All right, so now that we got these jigs done, we'll show you how to paint these up. Uh, pretty easy process. I just shake this Powder Tech, Pro Tech powder paint. I turn it upside down, make sure the lid's on nice and tight. Shake it up real good. And then I will flip it upside down slowly and go ahead and open that cap. And that's gonna keep that powder paint nice and fluffed. If you have a fluid bed, you can do it that way too. Um, I honestly found I don't even need the fluid bed. You just every five or 10 jigs, flip it up, shake it and keep dipping and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna use a heat gun. You can use a propane torch. You can put them in a baking oven, like a, a countertop oven and kind of pull them out and just dip them that way. Um, I like to, just paint them with a heat gun because it's much easier and safer. Uh, but we're gonna turn this on. I'm gonna rotate this jig, let it get nice and warm. And then when it's warm enough, I'm gonna plunge it into the powder paint and shake it off. So let's heat this up. We'll just keep it rotating on the heat here. It takes a few seconds, but as long as you just keep it rotating, even heat coverage across the bait, you'll be good. So it's been there for about 15 seconds now or so. I'll plunge it in. I'll shake off the excess, and that was a perfect coat every single time. Uh, I run it right back over the heat just a little bit just to solidify the paint anywhere that I missed, um, let it kind of fill in those gaps, and that's it. I'll hang it and let it dry, and then I can just move right on to the next one, heat it up. As it's getting warm, I can feel it on my hands too. Also, I'm freezing, but we let it warm up a little bit. Plunge it in. That one didn't get as much coverage because it wasn't as hot, so the paint will actually fall off instead of stick to the bait. Um, so you can let it heat up just a little bit more, kind of give it another dip, and do like a double coat, and it'll give it a better coverage there. So we'll heat that one up. That one, perfect coverage again. We'll hang him up. Do the last one, and we just made three jigs just like that. Got that nice and hot too. 
plunge him in there. Perfect coat again. Let that heat up. And you'll get a feel for it as you do it. How many seconds to let it sit there per size of jig head. But for my quarter ounce, it's like 10 seconds, five seconds. Perfect coat. And we'll hang it up to dry and that's it. Turn our heat gun off there and uh, we will meet you inside where it's warm to show you how to finish those up. All right, so now we're back inside. We're gonna go ahead and take one of these jig heads and we're gonna turn it into a smallmouth catching machine. All we gotta do is tie up a jig now. Uh, so this is a vise. Um, this is a bobbin. I put some thread on here. This is literally fly tying thread, but it's unithread, 136 denier, uh, 60 thread. I just get it in black. Basically, you can do this in two ways. You can either use like a jig skirt collar tool maker, uh, or you can hand tie them. You can get a little more creative with the hand tie, so I prefer to do that when I can. Um, but I use black because that's my favorite color for uh, using jig collars, so I just match it with my thread there. It tends to blend in with most colors. Got a pair of scissors to cut some of this stuff, and then a whip finish tool to actually finish this bait off. And then we have our jig heads we poured out in the garage. I'll go ahead and just clamp this guy down right in my vise here. And then this is round living rubber. That's what I've been making these jigs out of. Um, I usually use silicone jig skirt material. Works great, catches a lot of fish, but you get more action and more puff with this guy right here. It, it starts, it, the way rubber works underwater, it kind of moves and undulates and does its own thing when it's laying down there on the bottom. Um, so what I'm gonna do is basically measure out a section that's a little bit longer than the jig is and then a little longer than the head. So give myself a nice workable portion here and then I'll just go ahead and trim it up with my scissors. So I have a nice little workable portion of living rubber. Um, this comes in a big roll like this. You can buy it, pound spools, stuff like that um, and can tie a bunch of jigs with these. It's pretty affordable and so is all the rest of this stuff. Um, so to tie one of these, super straightforward, you're gonna take your jig, you're gonna start wrapping your thread right onto the jig like this, and I'll create basically the under layer of a jig skirt collar. So I'll tie a little base so that it has something to grip to, and then I'll trim off my tag end, and then this is how easy it is. You're literally gonna lay your living rubber right on the top here, and I'm gonna cheat it to the other side of the bait. So I basically have my first little bit of living rubber laying right here against the hook and on the jig head on my side, and I'm gonna tuck that down so that my thread will grab it. So I'll go ahead and start wrapping, and you can see it grabs it, and then as I wrap around the bait, I can roll this all the way so that that gets a complete 360 degree coverage. So when I rolled it all the way around, the other side comes up and touches this side here. So I have full coverage of that bait. And I know my hand is probably in the way here. I'm trying to hold this into place, but basically I'm pinching it with this hand here and tugging it down and making more wraps with this other hand. So I'm basically creating my jig skirt collar and I'm just gonna tightly wrap that on there, get some pull so that it kind of holds into place and I created a jig skirt collar there. I wrapped a whole bunch of times. You can wrap as many as you want, but I created that collar. That's it, That's you're tied up now. I'm gonna take my whip finishing tool. Uh, if you've tied flies before, you just kind of wrap it around like this and it ties a little knot around so I can hang my thread and it doesn't come all unraveled. So I, next step would be to drop a little bit of super glue on there if you really wanted to finish it off and make sure it lasts forever. Um, I lose these jigs before I ever even get that far. So that is that. Um, you have a bunch of living rubber now on a jig and you can see it just kind of laying there, weird shaped. Uh, here's the next step here. You're gonna pull this as tight as you can and I want it to end at the hook shank back here because that gives you those claws to stick out behind the hook shank and I want it to end right in front of the jig head. So to get it to end right in front of the jig head, I'm gonna pull it tight forward and cut right in front of the jig head. And it started to give it that finesse cut, but this stuff sticks together very well. You have to actually peel it apart. So what I do is I trim the bait first. So I'll pull the back end tight and I'll cut it right to the bend of the hook. Now you have a bunch of skirt material on there that looks like nothing. 
now you go through and pick every one apart because they'll stick together. You have to like pull on the strand and when you pull it and snap it back into place, it'll separate those strands and start to give it that appearance. So we'll go through and pick every one of these here. I basically just like pluck at it. If there's any that really stick together, you can get in there with your fingernail and like pull it apart. Uh, but for the most part, if you just kind of pluck at it like this, it'll start to separate itself. And I just keep working my way around the bait until I get every one of these separated. And as you keep plucking it, it'll start to separate and create that finesse cut profile that you're looking for. And it'll get real spiky and mimic that little baby jig that we've been working on and catching some fish with. So you can see now I got the front end kind of all spiked up. So then I'll just go to the back side and do the exact same thing. And as you pull it, it'll create that profile. And the tighter that you tie this band on here, the spikier this is gonna get. Also the shorter that you tie this band on here, the spikier it'll get. So if you tie a really tight band, you can see it's really puffing up and, and splaying out. If you tie it really loose in there, it'll lay a little flatter. Um, that's all personal preference. I like mine to be a little, little pokey and, and spiky. Um, I think it gives it a different look. And I think it's interesting to the fish and I think it makes smallmouth curious. But this is the hardest part. You just gotta go through here and pick every one of these. So give me one second and I'll be right back with you once we get these all picked apart. And there we go. Just like that, you got the spiky finesse jig uh, that we've been catching some smallmouth on. It's been a great technique right lately. You can see this thing's super small. Uh, tiny, tiny profile. You put that little snack crawl on the back of there and it catches a lot of smallmouth bass. Uh, I've really enjoyed fishing these. They're super quick and easy to make um, and they're way cheaper to make yourself than to buy online from somewhere else. So that's an awesome little jig. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's video, you wanna see how to make your own spinner baits, check this video out right here. Hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.